So hello there, I am back with another pen review. And today we will be reviewing this thing. Okay, so this is a desk fountain pen in extra fine. This is known as the Pilot Desk Pen. I don't know why, let's find out. So here is the pen itself. It's a pretty unassuming, kind of boring looking pen to be honest. But considering Pilot is a well-known maker of fine writing implements, and they have been making pens for, and fountain pens for eons, I expect it to be very good. There it is. Pilot. Super quality Japan. Extra fine. Does it post? It does not post. Of course it doesn't post. Just look at the taper. You know, it's just... And I spent a little bit extra on mine, and I got this rather beautiful looking piston converter. Oh, look at that. Look how marvellous that is. What a fine piston converter. It's not your standard everyday ink cartridges thing takes. It's a bit of a, it's a strange one. But if you don't want to use a uh, piston converter, well, it also, you can, it also comes with a, um, you know, a regular cartridge, see? Which is a great big circle thing, once again. Another thing that strikes me as interesting about the design of this pen is that there's no brand markings on it whatsoever. No pilot, no is pilot here. No, nope, no pilot on the cap. No pilot anywhere. It's just a pretty average looking stick of plastic. And I'm wondering, when pilot made this thing, were they ashamed that they made this thing this cheaper, this cheaper pen? Because this pen, I think, sells for like 10 Australian dollars. 10 to 20. I think I bought it for 20, including the piston converter. That piston converter actually cost almost as much as the entire pen. Yeah, you heard that right. So it's a very affordable pen. And Pilot does make some more expensive pens. So I'm wondering if they are, you know, they're somehow ashamed how boring and ugly it looks. They're just like, oh, yes. We also make this thing. We'll sell it under the table, you know. I suppose another reason for its rather average looking appearance and also the fact that it can't post or anything is that it's also called the desk pen, meaning that you're not meant to take it out in public. So of course it's going to look rather average, you know? It's something that stays at the studio, designed to serve one particular purpose, you know, a bit like the inside of your dishwasher. You use it all the time, but you wouldn't want to show it to anyone around town would you no showing off you know what it's actually quite comfortable to hold it's very comfortable to hold i'm already very impressed i'm very fussy when it comes to grip and i find that smooth plastic actually seems to be surprisingly grippy okay well it's time to put some ink on this thing now and find out if it's really any good or is it perhaps one of these. A lemon. Huh. 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 Oh, uh, yeah, I didn't come out here to actually do that. Okay, so I better put some ink in this just to see what it's like. I will not be using the piston converter, which I have mentioned before is not like your usual fountain pen cartridge, which looks like this here. This one has a great big opening on the end. But I have noticed at the other end, it looks like you possibly could use it as a normal fountain pen cartridge as well. It looks like you could pierce the end there, you know? Use it as a normal one. But I can't use a normal fountain pen cartridge with this pen. It just, you know, it, it no work. No. Ah yes, there's nothing like making a pen experience ink for the very first time. So just push it in. Oh, yeah, that broke the seal. Oh, yeah. Now let's try it out, shall we? See if anything comes out of here. See if it really is as fine as it advertised. Is it truly extra fine? And how long will I need to wait until the ink comes out?
I'm always so impatient when it comes to uh, getting a fountain pen going for the first time. Well, it's a nice pen to imagine to draw with anyway. Usually after about a minute or two of waiting, I get impatient and I start doing this until ink gets flinged across the room. Ha! Huh. <laughs> wow. Okay. Right, so when Pilot says extra fine, oh boy, do they mean it. This is the finest fountain pen nib I have ever experienced. Trying to use the nib upside down is actually crazy fine. It's like um a bit scratchy actually. Does it flex much? I press down. It's a vaguely thicker line. If I do a light oh yes, you get some line variation if you can find a piece of paper that can stand the level of pressure to a uh, get that line variation, you're likely just to, you know, stab the paper with this. Well, I did lots of drawing of this pen because it's only after you do lots of drawing that you can give a proper opinion that contains a harsh, bitter truth, you know. Then you can discover all of its faults, its problems. And what I discovered about this pen is that it's actually, it's actually pretty good. It's pretty good. In fact, it's very good. It's a great pen, yeah. So what shocked me most about this pen, actually, is how fine it is. You probably saw my initial reaction when I first tried it out, and I was amazed as to how fine it was. I was like, whoa. It is the finest fountain pen I have ever come across. I drew a little comparison here between various different types of pens. The, the Unipin 0.1mm, a Faber-Castell fine liner 0.3, and a Rotaring isograph kind of pen, it's a micronorm, a 0.25, and the Pilot Extra Fine Nib, I reckon it looks like a, maybe like a 0.2 millimeter tip or something. Well, that's the line thickness it makes on this paper I'm using anyway. I find that different types of paper will produce different line thicknesses, depending on how absorbent the paper is. Like if the paper is like a piece of sponge, the line will be very thick, no matter how thin the pen is. So I'm very happy as to how fine the tip is. It's amazing. I mean, it makes all the other extra fine tip pens I've used, fountain pens that is, look like mediums, you know. Maybe they should have given this another name, like an ultra fine. That Yeah, that would be better. Ultra extra fine. In fact, this nib is so fine, I think it's hit peak fineness for a fountain pen. I wouldn't want a fountain pen any finer than this, otherwise it would just be, I reckon it would be almost unusable. Well, you could only use it on the smoothest of paper anyway. The reason for that being is that the nib is so fine that you can really feel the texture of the paper under the nib, even though the paper is, you know, somewhat smooth. My sketchbook paper here, uh, the texture is still very evident. So when you're drawing or writing with it, it does provide a bit of feedback. And it's also uh, very audible when you're drawing with it, like, I'll just lean in here. Yes, here we go. Listen to this. That there is the sound of an extra fine fountain pen. Mm. Scribbly, scribbly. Another thing, you know when you want to get a really fine line with a fountain pen, you like to turn the nib upside down, because usually the uh, upper part of the nib there usually has a slightly finer tip on it. This one though, there's no real advantage when you turn the nib upside down. It seems to produce a pretty similar line thickness. It just feels a lot scratchier, that's all. Now I know I've said scratchy maybe a few times when describing this pen, but I want you to forget about the word scratchy because scratchy kind of, it's an unpleasant sounding word. And this pen is not unpleasant to use. It's very enjoyable to use. I want you to think of the word feedback, you know. It has an even level of friction all the way. It doesn't like catch on the paper. 
and then launch itself off onto the next mountain peak. It doesn't skip or jump, it just has this constant level of friction. I actually prefer a pen with a little bit of friction, you know. It's one of the many reasons why I'm not a huge fan of ballpoint pens. Because some of them makes you feel like you're drawing on like an oiled glass surface. And you try and do a straight line and every heartbeat is captured on the paper. Because drawing accurately with something so slippery is beyond human control. Yes. Now, or you could just rest your hand on the paper. Um, anyway, so, wait a minute, I can actually draw with a brush, which also has no friction. I think what it is, uh, it's when you put pressure on the paper and it also has no friction. That's where the big problem is, yeah. It's like if you're already levitating above the ground, it's impossible to slip on a banana peel. It's like that, yeah. Now, I've talked about the nib of the pen enough. Let's talk about the rest of the design of this pen. I've already showed you what it looks like. It's just pieces of pretty lightweight black plastic, actually. In fact, the body of the pen, if I unscrew the nib off, feels very light. Let me, I'll tap it near the microphone. You can hear how thin it sounds. Screwing it back on, it feels like a very well-machined piece of plastic. It's just smooth pieces of plastic. But despite it looking so basic, it feels incredibly comfortable to hold. The tapered end feels really good in the hand. And just before you get to the nib of the pen, the plastic end flanges out just slightly. And the main grip section, despite being made out of the smoothest plastic you can find, is very grippy. Because as I've explained before on this channel, smooth plastic, which has no texture to it, seems to be the grippiest and cheapest material that takes probably the least amount of effort to produce. So I think it was a good choice for a budget pen. If I was to think of some kind of analogy for this pen and the uh, kind of like design philosophy behind it, I'd probably think of some kind of car analogy, you know? And I think I will think of a car analogy. All of my analogies end up being cars. I don't know why. If he had two cars, one was like an expensive Lamborghini or whatever, known for its speed and its cool looks, but its uh, practical value is somewhat disputed. I mean, it's not the kind of car you would take down to the shops to do your shopping in now, is it? It's a luxury car for people that have money to burn. But this pen is more like a Toyota Camry. It's not made to look like the coolest thing on the road. It's designed primarily with function foremost. Something like that. Maybe there's a better car that actually fits this pen more than a Toyota Camry. A cheaper car even. Maybe this pen is a tractor. It's a substance before style kind of pen. It's designed to do a job. The work created with it is meant to be marvelled at, but the actual implement is not. It's like how people can appreciate an unblocked toilet, but they're not going to marvel at the aesthetics of a toilet plunger. No. So I think I'm being a bit harsh about the looks of this pen, actually. I think it's mostly the cap. The cap makes it look pretty cheap. But yet again, for a brand named pen, such as Pilot, it actually is a pretty cheap pen. It was, I uh, can't remember now. I think I said it at the beginning of the video anyway. Um, uh, um uh, something, I don't know. I think we've reached the conclusion now of this video. Now I've got to think of something. I've got to summarise my thoughts into one sentence, maybe. Okay, I think I've got it. Um, it's an affordable fountain pen made by a well-known brand. It's got a very fine tip on it. It has a lot of feedback, but it's not, like, scratchy. You wouldn't want a level of fineness any greater. And not in a fountain pen, anyway. Um... Yeah, okay, so, uh, goodbye. Thank you for watching. Bye. Mm, how long was I sitting here for rambling?